welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm back in uh, Las Vegas, as you can see, at the Paris Hotel and Casino. And today I want to use this feature to focus on the issue of uh, authenticity and reproduction as far as using theming in the sense of recreating uh, a famous place that is known to people. And so I want to combine some uh, live footage with some uh, uh, footage I've shot before with some voiceover and give you a perspective today on the Paris in Las Vegas. And so let's uh, go around and take a look and focus on this issue of authenticity as it relates to theming. Okay, and in this tour of the Paris, I'm beginning my uh, views outside, and I had this opportunity when I was there um, in 2015 to just sort of gaze and take a look at the exterior here that uh, resembles, uh, you know, the Paris Opera House that also alludes to the Louvre. Of course, you have the Eiffel Tower above, and that extrudes inside into the casino. And as I was looking at just... Um, the detail and, and the level of concern here. I was thinking about how it's so significant in creating any kind of authentic theming in that the designers um, who execute um, the plans for the space have to deliver on the material, right? They have to deliver the architecture. They have to deliver the design in such a way that the space is convincing enough to the guest. Um, and throughout this video, we'll be talking about the many ways in which we can create nuance, in which we can create forms of authenticity by first and foremost focusing on very authentic approach to the design side of the themed or immersive space. And as we continue to look at some imagery here of the Paris and Las Vegas, we're immediately reminded of the fact that when you create evocative design, and I would argue authentic design, you have to think about selecting certain elements that in a sense become icons, become symbols, become what Walt Disney called the weenies that attract the guest's eyes, uh, perspective, attention to those features and beckon them to come inside. And certainly you could say you have to stand out. Think of all the different sights and sounds on the Las Vegas Strip and how important it is to create these very iconic and symbolic approaches to architecture and design. And I thought it might be interesting to note here with this um, archival image from the UNLV's extensive collection of uh, casino images of the Strip that uh, originally this small casino known as Little Caesars uh, was present on the space where the Paris is today. And if you had that opportunity to visit the Strip over the years, I can uh, fondly remember just the transition, the change that has happened over the years as, you know, casinos like the Sands or the Boardwalk, the old Holiday Inn went down, or in this case, Little Caesars, and what those became. And that sense of excitement that was coming when you saw the new casinos uh, being built on the Strip. I can fondly remember the Bellagio, the Paris, the Aladdin, which of course became a PH Planet Hollywood later. Um, just the construction that went on and trying to imagine what these spaces were going to look like as that construction project was being undertaken. So for me, uh, a bit of nostalgia in terms of the authenticity of spaces like the Paris on the Las Vegas Strip. And we'll be emphasizing this throughout this video, but uh, we could talk about condensation, uh, which is a principle of symbols, in that a lot of things are represented in one symbol. And so looking at the Paris here, we could say the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, um, other places that are very iconic to people that either connote something about Paris, France, its people, its culture, and so forth. These are chosen very strategically such that they can evoke the greatest potential, the greatest effect, sensory or otherwise, in the many guests who visit a space like that of the Paris Las Vegas. Now if you've had a chance to read the Immersive Worlds Handbook, you'll note there's a really exciting interview by Joel Bergman who designed so many of the spaces on the Las Vegas Strip, many of Steve Wynn's and certainly the uh, spaces of the uh, Paris Las Vegas. So what I wanted to do was to give you um, one of the quotations, um, an excerpt. Some of these actually didn't make it into the book, but one of the ones that gives you, I think, some really good context about how we approach the design, including some of these issues we've previously talked about, including uh, paraphrasing and condensation and so forth. 
And here then is architect Joel Bergman on his inspiration behind the design of the Paris Las Vegas. Paris Casino was not the first casino resort created as an assemblage of building icons. However, like its most noticeable icon, the Eiffel Tower, it was an heroic effort led by Arthur Goldberg, then chairman of Bally's. Paris was as authentic as any project I have ever worked on, right down to the cobbled Champs-Élysées. Having visited Paris many times previous to its conception, I was well familiar with many of the major and lesser buildings that would be available to paraphrase. And I would have to say that it's no accident that in this interview, Joel Bergman used the word paraphrase. I think this is an important word to better understanding how the issue of authenticity in the theme casino like that of Paris Las Vegas is quite different than say the authenticity of another space that doesn't specifically rely on consumerist technologies, architecture, design, and very specifically those related to theming. And so what really is transpiring in the case of theming is that one does have to paraphrase. One selectively chooses certain iconic symbols, um, places, performances, sights, sounds, any other sensory details, and then re-amalgamates these together, remixes them together in such a way that it creates an evocative effect on the guest. And I would say that in a sense we could think of how a novelist creates a novel in the same way. One has to necessarily select certain characters, select certain elements of setting, including the description of that setting, focus on certain forms of action, resolution of conflict, and so forth. One cannot choose every single element that is part of the immersive world, the universe that makes up the characters and the setting and the actions within a novel. And then likewise, in the case of a theme casino, that same emphasis on creating something almost textually, I think, has to be understood. And so Bergman's quote here, in many respects, reminds us of some of the parallels of storytelling from the world of textual storytelling to this world of three-dimensional storytelling with its various forms of thematic architecture, design, material culture, and performance. And Bergman continues, However, visiting Paris again with the entire design team once I received the commission, gave me another perspective which I believe made Paris more successful. Even those elements such as the highly stylized Art Nouveau Porte Cochere and its street setting, which was created out of our imagination, seemed to be perfectly placed. And again, I would say that his views here parallel what he talked about in the first quote in terms of paraphrasing. In this case, talking about something that was created out of their imagination that seemed to be perfectly placed, I think this is a key part of the um, conceptualization of themed and immersive design. Again, critics might be looking for something that has more bearing or basis in uh, actual reality, uh, if we can define it in a particular place like Paris or France and so forth. But in this case, Bergman is pointing to the fact that the imagination plays such a vivid role in terms of the creation of theming and immersion. And what is key then is really sticking to one's guns and being able to say that the designer is fully aware of the need to develop the theming throughout the various spaces such that it reflects the creativity and imagination and I would say authenticity of the design team at hand. And I would say that in terms of the many criticisms that we've read about Paris or other uh, casinos on the Las Vegas Strip, um, one of the big ones that seems to uh, stand out is the notion that uh, Paris or any of these other casinos is in inauthentic because of the choices that have been made in terms of the design and architecture and the like. And here's an example of one such uh, criticism and in this case, as you can see, the concern is that uh, in the case of the Eiffel Tower, you're not in Paris, and so therefore you shouldn't, uh, presumably as a tourist, as a guest in the casino, take pictures of any of the spaces. And this, I think, amounts to very much a form of elitism and snobbery, again, assuming that there's some sort of um, original that can be found in Paris, um, when in fact maybe we should be talking more in the terms of what Bergman addressed um, in his quotes 
about a recreation, a paraphrase, something that draws on a previous source but does not attempt to maintain a total fidelity to that source. So I think something important to think about here. And in fact, in terms of thinking about the guest and his or her um, response to any theme casino, as you see here, I'm walking through the entrance to the Paris, um, I think we have to think in terms of defining authenticity and theming about the guest's perspective. Again, every guest is, is different. He or she reacts to a space like this in so many different ways, but designers need to be cognizant of how they might react. And this for me, if you've seen some of my other videos, is a very significant sign that adorns uh, the front of uh, the Paris just as you walk in. And for me, this sign is significant because it does play with the idea of authenticity. Uh, it warns the guest, in a sense, that he or she may be encountering some rather uh, tricky uh, cobblestone, uneven streets as he or she walks inside the casino. And in some ways, we could say this is maybe winking at the guest. In other ways, we could say it might be practical and indeed be there for the purpose of warning him or her about the uneven steps. Regardless, though, I think we have to say that acknowledging the guest is very key in terms of talking about the authenticity of any themed or immersive space. And we focused uh, a lot, certainly, on the outside of the casino as you uh, come inside the Paris, you know, that there's a lot of emphasis placed on creating an authentic material design, performing design inside the casino that hopefully also evokes something with the guest. And I think one of the real keys in thinking about how to create authenticity in a space is to not only focus on paraphrasing as Bergman talked about in terms of telling the story you're trying to tell, but is to focus on variance. And if you think of theme and variation in music, I think it's a pretty apt analogy here. So obviously you have to extend the exterior design to the interior of your casino space. You have to vary up the elements, so you might want to decide to uh, contrast some elements with others in such a way that it creates a sense in the guest mind of something different, something new, uh, something perhaps to be explored. Obviously all the techniques of using lighting and using the uh, faux uh, skylines and so forth as we so commonly associate with the form shops in Caesars Las Vegas, all of these things combined in a holistic sense will create an evocative space for hopefully any guest who visits, in this case, the Paris Las Vegas. And in so many ways we've identified this issue, but again when you come on the interior of the uh, casino space you might be thinking about some of these issues as we addressed um, on the exterior. When you're selecting and paraphrasing as Bergman talks about, you obviously have to choose some elements and not include other elements. Um, a critic, of course, would charge that by selecting only certain elements and depending on which ones you select, this could lead to essentialism, where you suggest the essence of a place, a culture, its people could be codified in a few symbols or icons as we've talked about, or in the case here, the material cues, uh, the place cues, the context cues from space that you've recreated here um, lead to forms of stereotyping. And although this is a legitimate concern and something we should think about, whether we're guests or designers or critics and analysts and researchers of themed and immersive spaces, I think we're applying notions of authenticity and notions of realism to spaces such as these when in fact we should be rethinking the context of our criticism, the context of our concern relative to, in this case, the space at hand, which happens to be a themed or immersive space. And as we continue the tour here and look at some additional um, elements of the inside of the uh, casino, just as we're about to uh, get close to uh, the entrance to, uh, to Bally's, we can look at so many of these features and say that they do have significance. And so when we're talking about authenticity, as I've stressed uh, throughout this video, we can't think of authenticity in some of the senses that we consider it in uh, spaces that don't have a theme simulated 
or um, fictive, I should say, immersive nature to them. Uh, if you read the criticisms, for example, of Ada Lee's Huxtable in The Unreal America, she's really concerned with what she calls the replacement of reality with selective fantasy. And I would agree with her, indeed it is um, a replacement of reality with a form of selective fantasy. But in a sense, you could say all reality, not to get too existential here, but a little, all reality is a fantasy. There's clearly an aspect of fantasy in all reality, and there's an aspect of reality in all fantasy. And if you read the work of Slavov Zizek, he certainly talks about um, th this, you know, these uh, issues uh, about simulation and about recreation and what it says uh, in terms of our consciousness. And now we're taking a walk back through the casino, of course. And so what I suggest is here, we have to consider the significance of all of the elements in any casino. When we're speaking of authenticity, we have to redefine authenticity for the specific context at hand. We have to better understand um, the many issues that are entailed in these recreations and these forms of fantasy. And in particular, as I've stressed earlier, we have to think about the role of the designer as he or she uh, paraphrases, as uh, Bergman talked about eloquently in his interview for uh, the Immersive Worlds Handbook. We also then have to think necessarily about the guest role. We have to think about how when we create fantasy spaces like these, what is fulfilled by them, quite obviously. Um, and so it's not necessarily going to be the same kind of fulfillment that we would expect if a given person on his or her own walk throughout the streets of Paris. And I've, as I've said in so many uh, different uh, occasions, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not the case that if any of us go to Paris, France, that we don't have a selective experience. We choose our own itinerary. We uh, discover sites on our own uh, with guidance or without guidance. We make decisions about what to leave out. We create our itineraries. And our itineraries, if you think about it, of any space that we visit, whether a theme space like this or a space that some unfortunately call real, like uh, Paris, France, um, we selectively experience that reality. And it reminds me certainly of uh, Plato's Cave and the Republic and uh, you know, allegories from the Matrix and so forth in terms of the fictive and the real and the various relationships uh, that fall in between those two, I would say, unfortunate dichotomy, dichotomies that are too, you know, binary in nature. So my suggestion to close this is to focus again on this need to re reorient authenticity. In this case, as we will see a guest uh, walking through uh, the casino, we have to reorient authenticity in terms of her perspective that she gets as she moves through this casino. I hope you enjoyed this video feature today here at the Paris Las Vegas and please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.